Okay, guys. So, you guys have seen my Pico 21 before. Well, removed most of the screws to save you guys the headache of watching that, but it barely turns over anymore. I don't know what's going on with it. Like it, uh, put some after and oil in it to let it sit. And it doesn't want to turn over like it did before, and I'm not exactly sure why. So, I'm going to figure out screws tight here, and then I'll take it apart, and we'll find out. I've never actually taken this engine apart before, so I don't even know what it looks like in there. It is new, though. So, hopefully no one tries to call me again. I'm frig over my video. Because apparently that just keeps on happening. I have my phone plugged in, that's why you see that white cord there. So we're going to pull out the back plate. We need to get power tools to do this with. Just taking stuff apart, but uh, you're just going to be really careful when using power tools because you can strip these little screws super, super easy. So we're going to take it apart, have a gander in there, and we're going to give it a quick rinse out. I don't have any brake parts cleaner, carb cleaner, or anything left, so I'm going to just use starter fluid, which is fine. It's just a high performance solvent. It won't do much damage to anything. Just make sure you re-oil everything before you put it back together. Okay. Back plate removed. And we'll pull our sleeve. Oh, pretty. Very nice. The head button's stuck in there, but that's okay. I've never looked inside this engine before, so and as you can see, it's like really tight and hard to turn over, and I don't know why. So it feels like it's been sitting for a long time, and all I did was put a little after an oil in there. Should have grabbed my pick wherever it is. We'll see if I can find it. Hang on. Alright, couldn't find my pick, so what I just did was I grabbed my little needle nose and just kind of gently pulled the rod forward to get it off the crank pin. There we go. And there's our piston. Pretty nice. We know that this side went towards the back. This side goes towards the front. If you put it back in the wrong way around, the engine won't turn over. Oh, that's like stiff. It won't even turn over at all. Let's see if I can push the, the old crankshaft out here. Should just be able to push out by hand. If it doesn't come out by hand, there's something wrong. Uh, bearing's all crunchy and crusty feeling in there. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to use a little bit of stuff to... I don't know if that was maybe from the after oil, maybe it dissolved the preservation they put in this engine from factory. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. I just use my usual stuff. I've never ever had a problem with it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's just that uh, weird. It left like an orange varnish on everything. There's like a sticky like sticky like glue like I don't understand what this is I mean I've never had that after an oil do that before I think there must have been something inside this engine that was just not not quite kosher to begin with but uh, you can see inside there there's still a little bit of that shite I'm gonna really watch on YouTube now cuz you say the F word too much or anything they get really mad at you they demonetize, which I'm sure most of my videos are demonetized to begin with because I, I don't know, but they probably are. <laughs> Let's see. That stuff gets really cold on your fingers. Holy doodle. Always use, uh, we're going to be playing around with stuff like that. Just, um, you know, well-ventilated area because that shit can explode in your face. Like no smoking or anything around it because it's, uh, it can go bang. It's like one time. I was, uh, had flooded my Jeep at Stave Lake, 
and thought it'd be a good idea to use some brake parts cleaner. I'm just cleaning off the crankshaft now. I uh, thought it'd be a good idea to clean out the uh, wet distributor housing or distributor cap with uh, brake parts cleaner. When I put it back on and tried to start, I heard a loud bang. <laughs> High voltage and a flammable liquid and confined in a small area is not the smartest thing to do. Yeah, I don't know what this orange stuff is. I mean, my after oil is red, not orange. So, I don't know exactly what the deal is here, but it's a lot better than it was. I just wanted to share this with you guys on camera. It's like sticky, super sticky. I don't understand what this stuff could have been. What a nice piston, though. It really sucks that with uh, with Pico they don't uh, they don't support their engines very well. They do not whatsoever support their engines half the time. It's like you need parts or something, and they won't sell them to you, or they won't list them for sale, or there's always some problem. And it's like, you know, you guys build championship engines, you might want to at least list a few parts for it. Piss me off because it's like you know you spend all that money on an engine and something happens and you can't get any parts for it. it's a real bummer right so this time I'm not going to use that after an oil again I am going to use some this is Klotz caster oil I usually reassemble my engines with this this engine's going to get run soon anyway so uh, we're just going to put some of the oil into the bearings down the bore of the crankcase. Don't use castor oil as a storage lubricant. Uh, it will get sticky over time. But this engine, once the weather clears up here, hopefully in the next week or so, it's going to get run. So, or broken in anyways, and then taken apart and cleaned again. So, um, really wouldn't worry about it too much. But as far as letting it sit for months or years at a time I'd suggest against that or you know what I mean look at that perfectly clean now turns beautiful so our connecting rod went in this way the tapered side like that always faces in uh, if you ever get lost about that because if you put it back in the wrong way bad things might happen Just put some oil kind of everywhere. You don't want to put the shit together dry. You want to give it something to lubricate when it first starts up. Because these are like the highest stress parts, right? I've had enough of this bloody weather, I can tell you that. Cold and raining and windy and snowing and shit, I've had it. They can keep it. I am far from done with it, or more than done with it, whatever. This can be a little bit tricky trying to get that back on. Just have to get it lined up just right. There we go. You just have to kind of fart around with it to get it just lined up correctly, which is okay. Being the fact these engines are very high tolerance to begin with. And then we're going to take our sleeve. I'm just going to give it a quick cleaning first. I need that shitty residue to oil or whatever the hell that was that was in there. I usually use brake parts cleaner for this, but like I was saying before, I didn't have any. So I'm just using a little bit of a starter fluid, which is, um, you know, it's a wicked cleaner, but it's also really stinky and dangerous to play around with. And don't ever use starter fluid to try and start your nitro engines. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. Like, never. If it won't start normally um, with the fuel that's intended for it, there's something wrong with it. Okay, slide this guy back together. Alright. 
And there's a tiny notch right. It's hard to see it, but there's a tiny notch there. And there's a pin, and you just got to line those two up. Then it should sit, sit right back down again. There we go. Oh, nice and beautiful and smooth. Oh, perfect. That actually kind of freaked me out. I wasn't sure what was going on with this thing. Like I said, I've never run it before, so. And uh, suddenly it wouldn't turn over or do anything. I was like, kind of like, huh. Well, that's not very good. Because these engines are not cheap. And they don't make them anymore. Which I later found out after I bought it. And you can't buy parts for it either. <laughs> So it's like even a bigger bummer. I'm going to pause for a minute while I put all these screws back in, guys, because I'm sure that's just going to bore the crap out of you. This video probably already has. So just bear with me for a minute. Okay, guys, we're back. So we got the back plate on, and we're just going to screw the head down. And uh, I've gotten the question a few times on, like, how's the correct way to do it. And I will show you. You don't, I mean, they do make a torque wrench specifically for this, but they're very expensive, and I've never used one before. So you want to run all the screws down. This head has six. Uh, it doesn't matter if it has four, five, six, doesn't matter. Anyways, so you want to run them all down just, just so you kind of feel them start to try to snug. And then just kind of work them out all down little bit by little bit in a star pattern or as close to star as you can get. And just keep going little bit by little bit. Then go across, and as soon as it's like, you don't need to go crazy tight, but as long as you're like, finger tight, then snug, basically. Because if you strip out your block or you break the screw off, you're really screwed. Literally. And then just go all the way around to make sure you got every single one. Alright, so hopefully that was exciting. Anyways, turns over and is beautiful just like it was once before. I'm just going to throw a little extra castor oil in that piston. And be careful when you're using, uh, like, after an oil or castor oil. Um, if you use too much, it will fill up at the bottom. Like, it'll pool up in the bottom of the engine and make it really hard to start it. It'll hydro-lock the engine and basically almost stop it from turning over. So just be kind of uh, careful when you're using that kind of stuff. Um, you don't need a lot. You just need, like, just a few drops. So, and don't use WD-40 inside your engine either. That stuff does not belong in any engine. That stuff is for squeaky door hinges. But my engine mount is also on the way for this thing, which is, uh, this 21 does take a big block engine mount. So this is actually going to go in my T-Max at uh, maybe a later date, we'll see, or another project I'm not quite sure about yet, if I can actually get it. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. But uh, we'll see. And we got the carburetor here. Always make sure that your O ring is in place. I have the pinch bolt and stuff is in the box for this engine here. You know, you would think with the amount of money you spend on an engine like this <coughs> and the quality and how nice it is, <clears throat> you would think they'd include a glow plug with it. You know, I noticed that with a lot of engines recently. It's like you buy it, you think, oh, right on, you know what's nice and expensive and pretty and whatever and you open up the box and it comes with the collet and the carburetor and whatever and there's no flip and glow plug in there what the hell is the deal with that like if you order an engine from Nova Rossi or Pico or whatever half the time there's no glow plug which is pretty stupid I don't understand why the hell that is but um, yeah so this is the Pico or Omega X2 21 once again, very nice. Um, this is actually designed to go in a Traxxas, so hence the reason why it's got the four holes in the back and the oddball pull starter, which most of these are all bump starts, so, and the short crankshaft. 
or shorter crankshaft, I should say. And another tip, I don't have any paper towel on hand, but wad up a piece of paper towel with some oil on it, plug your exhaust port, leave a glow plug in it, plug your carburetor, and uh, get yourself like a, a plastic bag that you can suck all the air out of, that way it will keep the engine from the environment if you're going to let it sit for, you know, months or years at a time, so those are all things you can look at. Anyways, guys, I've been just freaking rambling on and on here about it, and... I'm going to cut the video off here, so you guys have a good one, and uh, keep on burning nitro. Oh, and uh, thank you to all my subscribers and viewers. I have over 100,000 views now, which is pretty cool. Anyways, guys, take it easy.